buying a ticket to a concert or an event used to require a trip to your local box office. But these days, technology has taken ticketing to a whole nother level. Online platforms are making it easy and efficient for patrons to connect with organizations hoping to build an audience. That is, unless the middleman makes off with your profits. Entering their 21st season, the Bach Aria soloists are practicing for performances put on hold by the pandemic. As a not-for-profit, this chamber music ensemble conducts business on small margins, with much of its earnings going toward operating expenses. So when they discovered their ticketing platform, Seattle-based Brown Paper Tickets, was retaining more than its fair share, this Prairie, Kansas-based performing group thought there must be some kind of mistake. We calculated the amount of money that they owed us, $9,130, and we, you know, to think that, I mean, you, the first inkling is, are they not going to pay this money back? What's going on? That's the question hundreds of American and international organizations are asking this boutique ticket broker that caters to nonprofits and small businesses, like the Tiki Bar in Costa Mesa, California. Been using them, like I said, since 2012, and everything was fine. About seven or ten days after the event, they'll send me a check for the amount due. Kyle Conti owns and operates this live music venue and bar. Like many brown paper ticket patrons, he used the online platform because it charged minimal fees and delivered exceptional 24-7 customer service. That was until February of 2020, when the box office at brown paper tickets suddenly went dark. I had three shows booked with them, the middle of February, February 15th and 28th and 29th, and all three shows sold out. And they sent me checks for the 15th and the 28th. I, was, I call them up, I go, hey, where's the check for the February 29th show? I'm like, oh, well, did you cash the ones from the other ones? And I said, yeah, they will don't cash those. I'm like, what do you mean don't cash them? It was a request cash repeated them. by brown paper tickets to venues across the country. So they emailed me and said, don't cash those checks. They won't be any good. Ann Olin stopped short of cashing so six checks, totaling nearly $23,000 due to them from proceeds of tickets sold for a dinner theater production performed in Eagle, Colorado last February. By a show of hands, how many of you all used brown paper tickets prior to 2020? Mark LaCella, vice president of a Meridian, Connecticut theater company, didn't get the heads up until it was too late. Our first check for that production of Next to Normal arrived. I went to the bank and deposited it. And then uh, within 48 hours, I got a communication from the bank that the check was being returned. Brown Paper Tickets says COVID-19 plays a pivotal role in the reason why the company can't pay the more than $6 million it owes to event organizers and the $760,000 due to direct ticket buyers. It's an excuse many say falls flat since some events happened prior to the March 15th shutdown. The timing doesn't really line up. But even if it was a pandemic, it's money that comes in that doesn't belong to them, you know? So either way, it should be a money goes in and then you put it right back out. So I don't, I don't buy that. Even more infuriating is that despite owing millions to thousands, Brown Paper Tickets continues to offer its platform services to other organizations, unaware of what appears to be, at the least, questionable accounting. Well, we're a small nonprofit. What they did to us this year is just, it almost killed us. And to find out that there was this history from March until now, and that we got suckered in in August, it just, it, it, I, I, I'm just getting madder and madder sitting here. Well, they're put, hosting shows right now that are you know, oblivious to what's going on with the company, and they're, they're literally stealing the money from them. And the fact they're still taking in funds while failing to meet commitments is just one of the many questions looming over this Emerald City company. What is happening with all those funds? That's the big question, Where, where's all the money?